hi guys welcome back to my channel today we are going to talk about my TTC journey or trying to conceive journey slash my HSG test experience so the last time I spoke to you guys about anything was basically it was my miscarriage story it was very emotional that was a very hard time um, and today is February the 11th 2021 I actually had a miscarriage and the surgery in May of 2017 so it's been almost four years since um the last time i conceived although that was an unplanned pregnancy um so i don't i'm not sure if i mentioned it but i did say after my 30th birthday which was in october um i told my husband that i would be open to trying to conceive again for us to start our family so prior to that i did go to the doctor because i just wanted to make sure that everything was okay and also because i mean we weren't really trying but we weren't really preventing anything all 2020 so it was kind of like okay i didn't get pregnant and we want to start getting pregnant or start trying at least to get pregnant um so let's just see what is what so i did go to my doctor um so I live in Houston, Texas, and we have um, a hospital called Kelsey Sebo, and I kind of shifted all of my, um, I guess, to OBG or gynecologist appointments to Kelsey Sebo. However, because of COVID and you know people not being able to go in, um, by the time October came or uh, September, October ish, like getting an appointment was almost impossible <laughs> the appointments were available like january so i went to my old doctor that um i was actually seeing during the time i had my miscarriage and when i conceived at the time so i went to see him um we did some tests you know he had me um he checked my hormones when i got my period um and then we did an ultrasound so based off of my blood test from when I was on my cycle he basically said that my blood results were weird so we did the ultrasound and I have a polycystic ovary so basically I had been diagnosed with PCOS kind of um, in my early 20s and so I've always known that I've had PCOS um, I do know that it's harder to conceive while having PCOS and I already kind of wanted to stay ahead of that anyways. So basically PCOS is polycystic ovary syndrome. That's PCOS. Yes. <laughs> okay. So polycystic ovary syndrome, meaning that you just have cysts on your ovaries. Um, so I first found out about it. For one, my cycles, ever since I was 13, I think I got my cycle when I was 13. And since my cycle started, um, basically, it was irregular. So it used to come every three months. Uh, when I was 21, I did go to the doctor because I didn't get my period for six months. And I wasn't pregnant. So they did have to make my period come. Um, there was a whole cancer situation or whatever that I had to go through. I had to get different biopsies and stuff like that. So, fast forward through all of that. Um, here we are, PCOS, doctor's hormone. So, based off of the ultrasound, I had cysts on my ovaries, which they saw, which is something that I knew. Based off of my blood reports, he said that there are three different hormones that have to be abnormal in order for you know someone to diagnose you with PCOS I only had one of the three levels that were abnormal so he said it's not terrible but you know there's still a problem so he then referred me to a fertility clinic so um, immediately after that I did I felt a little sad and I feel like 
something told me that I should call Kelsey Sebo. I did try to check to see if they had an available appointment sometime soon. They did not. So I went ahead and I called the fertility clinic and I think they had an appointment like that following week. So my husband and I went to the clinic. Um, the clinic is CCRM if you're in Houston and you are experiencing fertility issues or you want to find a clinic. We went there. Um, I felt like it was very informative. They seem to be experts and everything. So um, I want to say we spoke with Dr. Hickman. I cannot remember his name, um, but it was a doctor. I'm pretty sure it was Dr. Hickman. So I came in there prepared. I had questions. You know, I've done so much research um, because I already knew that this day was coming. Um, I knew that there was going to be a time when we would be ready to start trying to have a baby. And so I kind of had already been preparing myself. So I went in there with my ultrasounds. I went in there with my uh, blood test results. Like I was ready and he was able to look at everything right there in front of me and kind of talk to me about what was what. So um, our initial consultation, he did say, you know, I have PCOS. He said the good thing was that based off of my ultrasound, he did see that I had eggs on my uterine wall. He said, however, it just may be as simple as you're ovulating but your body just isn't releasing an egg which you know can be helped out with a fertility drug so um you know we did the whole thing then we actually did some blood work to see you know like our blood type and um to check for to see if i was immune to chicken pox and some other virus i can't remember what it was called and so um my husband he did some and the problem was that so we do have insurance we have health insurance he works for the city and we have pretty good insurance so they said that our insurance did not cover anything basically he gave us a plan the first step would be to basically do um a drug called letrozole we do letrozole for three months um and it was if i'm not mistaken it was 850 each cycle meaning each month just to get the prescription they would do um ultrasounds and timed intercourse for us to do that it was 850 dollars a month that's not including the cost of the drug which they said to budget between two to five hundred dollars to do the drug um so that was that if that didn't work after three months then we would do IUI so basically that would be us doing the fertility drug as well as um the IUI and I believe that's two thousand dollars each cycle not including the um medication and so before we do any of that, they did recommend me doing an HSG test and something else. I can't remember what it was. Checking my uterus to make sure everything was intact and everything looked well or whatever. So they did say that I had to do that between day 7 and 10 of my period. So we couldn't start anything that day because I had not gotten my cycle yet. Um, and this was... In October so this was after okay I had already gotten my cycle that month this was after I went to Mexico for my birthday and so it was close to November it was like the end of uh, mid to end October so the um, thing was they tried to tell us like oh we weren't able to check your insurance yet but we're gonna go ahead and run the benefits and then we're gonna see what you guys have to pay out of pocket so they came back and said that our insurance did not cover any fertility thing so basically we'll be paying for everything out of pocket and in order to do the hsg test and all of that it will be eight hundred dollars before we even start the medication or whatever and so when talking to my husband i'm like you know what i think we should at least do the test to make sure every that is good he did do his semen analysis with them everything came back good on his part and so it was just for me to take the hsg test to make sure everything was good on my end for us to get started with this process 
So something, you know, brought up Kelsey Sebo to me again. So I did call Kelsey Sebo. There was a new doctor that had just got, um, that they just hired and she doesn't really have a client, a patient list, I guess, yet. And so, or patients. And so they were like, you know, if you want to, three days, they had an appointment available with her. And I was like, you know what, I'll take it. So my original doctor that I went to, um, they were basically saying, like, oh, well, that's too much for the HSG says We could probably get you one at another, you know, it's just like an imaging clinic here and it should be like $300, which was a lot cheaper. So I was like, okay, well, we could do that. Um, or if we have to pay the $800, then we have to pay the $800. But I would like to go through my insurance if I can. So I was able to get an appointment with the doctor and Kelsey Sebo, which I'm so glad that I listened to that voice that kept telling me to call Kelsey Sebo because when I went to see the doctor, I basically paid a $65 copay because it was just a specialty visit. And I talked to her about everything. She did say that she was able to prescribe me the medication. And basically, like, there's no extra cost for that. It's just a doctor's visit, basically. And she did recommend that I take the HSG sets and everything else. So, um, when my cycle came, I did call and schedule for the HSG test. And they told me that I would only have to pay a $65 copay. So, of course, you know, to save money, that's the route that I went. We are in the process of purchasing a home. And I did not want to start a big financial commitment to something while we were in the middle of purchasing a home so we talked about it at the doctor's office and we my husband and I both agreed that look we should do the test but we should probably not worry about the cycles and all of that until after we purchase our home so that you know we're not slowing down on this or you know occurring more debt or whatever so we were able to do the HSG test at Kelsey Sebo. So that's the background on that. Now, I did a lot of research, okay? Because I'm a type of person is I don't like to go into anything blind and I like to know all that I can know. Like I like to prepare myself as much as I can before I get into something. Okay, so <laughs> um, I did see, I watched quite a few videos on YouTube about this HSG test and I don't know how to pronounce it I'm not gonna even lie but I will put the name of the test here so that you guys can know what it is but for short it's called an HSG test and if you google it it will definitely come up under HSG test so I heard mixed reviews some people were saying that it was painful some people were saying that it wasn't painful and some people were saying that it felt like a mild cramp. Now, I'm not sure what type of cramps you guys have or what type of cramps they have, but my cramps are like serious. Like I throw up, you know, I can't move, like I can't really function, I can't eat, sometimes I get a fever, like I have to lay on a heating pad, sometimes drugs don't work. Um, so my, my cycle, my cramps, they are terrible. And that still did not prepare me for this just Jesus, to be completely honest. So I did see in some videos, some people were saying that they got prescriptions beforehand, um, to make sure that they did not get any type of infections or, you know, pain medication and so on. I did not get any of that. However, um... The only thing they told me to do prior to it was basically just to make sure that I had someone to drive me because I would be in pain and, you know, I would experience some bleeding. So, going into it, I don't think I fully thought about everything. So, I did actually get this test done with a radiologist. Um, so, that's one. And I didn't even think about, you know my lady parts so it wasn't until the day before where I was like oh my god I have not had my wax appointment like am I gonna have a woman doctor I probably feel more comfortable with her 
I had a man doctor and I feel so shamed because I did not get my monthly wax and I think I was like six weeks overdue, <laughs> overdue for my appointment at that point. So, you know, everything wasn't looking pretty. Okay, anyways, that's off subject. So, um, I did have my mom go with me because my husband had to work that day and prior to the appointment I took an 800 milligram ibuprofen okay so I'm just gonna give that disclaimer I did take medicine because I did hear people say like you should probably take a pain pill before to kind of combat the pain so I go there I check in they have me you know change into the gown um, there was a tech that came and got me and took me into the room and basically um, it's a bed that you lay on they have an x-ray machine that goes over your abdomen area and then they take um, basically they use the little spectacle that opened you up for your pap smear they take a long spectacle with a balloon on it they stick it in your vagina they inflate the balloon to open up your uterus and then there is a dye that they insert um, to see if you have any blockages in your fallopian tubes so I laid on the bed um, you know the doctor came in introduced himself he explained the whole procedure to me again and then you know there's a monitor that was right there that I was able to see the whole time that basically you know I could see what he was doing and I could see what he could see because that's what he was using to make sure that I had no blockages so there was a nurse I believe that came in after the tech left and she kind of held my hand through everything so the um, pap smear thing that they put in he put it in and then turned it that in itself right there was very uncomfortable they also didn't have those little foot pads that you put your feet on so during this whole time I'm holding my legs open on the edge of the bed <laughs> because they didn't have the little foot things there with the spectacle in turn it to the side so that's very uncomfortable so then he puts the long thing in which was fine um, I didn't really it just felt like, you know, the little um, Q-tips that they use when they're giving you a pap smear. That's what it felt like. Then he says, you know, you might not even feel it. I have pe patients who say they don't feel it at all. So I'm like, okay. So he says, you might feel a mild cramp because I'm about to inflate the balloon in three, two, and one. And when I say when one came, it felt like somebody knocked the wind out of me I felt everything and it did not feel good and it did not feel like a mild cramp even a mild cramp for me so um, he inflated the balloon I was holding my breath because I'm <laughs> I'm a person where it's like I gotta focus on the pain so that I can like breathe through it or I can get through it I was trying to hold my breath but it was it just it hurted so bad so uh, once he inflated it the whole thing kind of went by very quickly um i want to say it was less than 10 minutes after we started so he put it in he inflated the balloon you know he let me know like okay i'm about to insert the die he inserted the die they had me flip over to the right they had me flip over to the left and then he's like okay i'm deflating it boom 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 he took it out um he did give me my results right on the spot. I had no blockages and everything looked well. They did tell me that I might experience some bleeding or spotting and that was it. I did hear like some people say that they bled for like maybe a day or two. Um, I basically spotted for the rest of the day. It was painful. Um, like I could still feel maybe some throbbing. I don't know. But the balloon for me, the balloon was where I felt the pain. I did see um, a couple of videos where a few ladies said that the dye was painful for them. Um, but all of those videos, they all have blockages. So I could see how the dye would be painful if you have some type of blockage because 
you know your fallopian tubes are not very big and if you're trying to insert a liquid or something and it's blocked it has nowhere to go so which can kind of inflate your tubes which kind of makes sense to me so um i was fortunate enough to not have any blockages and so we were able to proceed with the next thing i did not get my cycle in december i did um, call the doctor she did give me a medication to make my period come so january was our first cycle um january came i did the daniel fast and so to be honest when i thought about it i did not want to get pregnant in january 100 percent ready in january to like get pregnant after i thought about it and then there were so many other things that kind of came up um so um we did baby dance or we tried but we didn't do it um at the scheduled time like they told us to so um, needless to say i did not get pregnant and um this is now february and we are going to actually try to get pregnant and we are going to baby dance when we should so i did get my period already um i have taken my second um, round of letrozole and we are to start baby dancing tomorrow so fingers crossed prayers up that really on our first try you know it's gonna be successful for us I did have an ultrasound yesterday the doctor wanted to check to see if I had any you know follicles to see if the medicine worked um, we also did some blood work. I think it was to check my AC. I think it's called ACL or ACH levels. Um, and that's basically just to see if my body would respond to the medication. And it came back clear. It came back good. So they said that my body should respond to the medicine. And you know, like, it should be helpful. So, yes, when I did the ultrasound, I did get my results back yesterday as well. And I have 27 follicles on my right side and 20 on my left side. So I do have, you know, eggs that are waiting and ready to be fertilized. And, you know, we're praying that we are successful this month. Um, so, yeah, that is what to expect. I did also hear that a lot of people get pregnant after doing the HSG test. That was not my experience. I want to say um, we did baby dance either that day or the day after. I think it was the day after because my husband, um, he's a firefighter, so he works 24-hour shifts. So we did it the day after. Um, and we didn't get pregnant. So... Um, I'm excited I'm nervous um, but I'm keeping I'm keeping my hope alive I don't know that sounds very cliche but I'm I'm optimistic about this journey this is something that I wasn't sure if I really wanted to share because I didn't know you know what type of emotional state i would be in throughout this time um i have been you know eating healthier like i said i did the daniels fast so last month was really like a detox and a cleanse of my body you know i've been exercising regularly for almost two years now and so i have minimized a lot of my stress you know last year so i feel like I'm in a place where this is the perfect time. Me and my husband are in a great place. Um, and we're ready to embark on this TTC journey. I'm not sure how often I will update you guys. But I will try as much as I can. Um, and as much as I feel comfortable with doing. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope this is helpful for all my ladies out there who are on their ttc journey and are trying to conceive and may be experiencing hardships with that you guys are in my prayers 
thank you guys so much for watching i do hope that this video was helpful and it kind of gives you guys an insight as to what to expect if you're getting the hsg test please let me know if you've had it how that experience was for you and if you are getting it let me know like if you have any questions that i didn't cover or what you're expecting or what you're nervous about because me watching youtube videos like that was my source of finding out information to really see like what the heck is gonna happen thank you guys so much for watching all of my ladies and mamas to be that are trying to conceive that are on this ttc journey and you are experiencing hardships you guys are in my prayers i feel your pain i know your pain and we are going to get through this i'm praying that we all have babies in 2021 or we all have a successful ttc journey in 2021 so please stay hopeful don't give up and don't get discouraged. I know that's easier said than done. I'm living it, but guess what? In God's timing, it's gonna happen. And I'm holding on to that. And that is literally what's getting me through it. But thank you guys again for watching. Please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys next time.